To kick off the new year, I decided to share my full-length watercolor magnolias course with you, so let's get started. Here is the reference photo I will be working with on this class. One thing that I really liked about this photo is that it's lit from behind. This creates a glowing edge around the petals and the branches, and this gives you an opportunity to work with the contrast and leave some bright pure white areas. There are also some nice shadow areas at the base of the petals, so the contrasts and the light and darks just help to make a painting more interesting and vibrant. The background can be painted using the light blues and greens that are in the photo, but I'm choosing to paint some of the greens and grayish hue made from the pink that I will use for the petals mixed with bright green, which is the complement of pink. This will ensure color harmony throughout the painting. To begin, I traced my sketch on my cold press Fabriano paper. This is my palette, the six colors from the Daniel Smith introductory set, and for this painting, I will only use these bottom three. These are the cool primary colors. The top ones are warm, and I won't be using those for this painting. So I'm going to start by mixing and testing my background colors on my scratch paper to help me decide where I want to go with it. I want it to be interesting, but not to detract from the subject, so I will keep it on the neutral side. Since green is complementary to pink, I want to mix a nice, slightly neutral green which I will get when I add some pink to the blue and yellows. I just keep adding more yellow, blue, and pink until I get a color that I like, and then I'll start testing them on my scratch paper. So I have this dark green that I'm going to test just as a starting point. I can already tell it's going to be too dark and a little bit too green, so I'm going to adjust that. I'll line it with a little bit of yellow and probably add a little bit more pink just to neutralize that color a bit. Okay, we'll try this color, and it's a little bit more brown. So we'll add a little bit more blue to it. We'll just keep fine-tuning it until we get that nice, neutral, light, undistracting color. I'm mixing a lot of colors, but I'm not worried about that. I'm going to want to have a big pool of color to make sure to cover my entire background anyway, so none of this paint is getting wasted. Now a little bit more pink. Still a little bit too blue. So we'll add some yellow to that. You can see already how even just these three colors give you so many options for different shades. Alright, some more pink again. a little bit gray, but we're getting a bit closer. It's getting a little bit more of a neutral green. I'm liking that. A tad more yellow here. More blue. bit more pink to give it a little bit more of a purple color. And that's a little bit dark still, so I'm adding even more yellow. 
and that's looking really close to the color that I'd like to use. Add a touch more blue here. Let's thin that out so it's not so strong. And I'm really liking that color. Add a tiny bit more yellow. That's definitely more green. Now I'm just testing it against that pink because that will be the primary color of the magnolia petals. So I just want to see how that's going to look compared to that green color. Add a touch of that cool blue just to see what the shadow colors on the petals are going to look like with the green background. So I'm really liking these colors together. I'm just going to make sure that I have enough of that green pool so that I don't run out in the middle of the painting. So I'm going to take my spray bottle and add a little bit to that to make sure I have enough. So I will clean my water dish and be back. So we have that green that's all mixed up and ready to go. And just for some variation, I'm going to use just pure phthalo blue. And then I'll interchangeably use the green and the blue on the wet and wet wash. I'm going to make sure it's nice and thin. I don't want it to be too thick. So I'm going to add a little water to it, swish it around. get my brush nice and clean. I'm going to use my oval brush and I'm going to start wetting the background. I'm going to wet the background in stages. If I wet everything at once then areas would dry before I could get to them. So I'm just going to start in this top left hand corner over to the top right hand corner. Use my brush, use my very clean water and just brush it all, all along the background, avoiding the stems and blossoms. And I don't have to paint right up to the line. I'm getting close. And I want to give this a minute or two to soak into the paper so it's not just sitting right on top of the paper. Move any dust or lint or hairs that gather. The paper's all wet up to that corner now and it's had a little time to soak in. You can see that the paper is nice and shiny. I'm mixing up this puddle just in case some of the colors separated. And I'm just going to start here. The color's a little too concentrated, so I'm going to add a little bit more water. Mix it all together. I'm liking that better. So you need to move fairly quickly before the paper dries. But you still need to be careful to paint around those edges. 
dip into that pure blue and I'm just going to add that a little bit here and a little bit there. Still avoiding the stems, just painting carefully along the lines there. And you can see my paper is still nice and wet. It's important to have a brush with a good point so that you can paint carefully around the edges. Using a little bit more of that blue, now I'm going to paint away from the edge and into that wet background area. and then to the green mix and just give them a nice smooth transition. That blue is a little too concentrated so I'm blending it out a bit into the green to give it a little bit more of a neutral color. Back along the edges Now I want to fill in this middle area again before it dries. Go back with my green mix. It's all still nice and wet so I can keep adding colors until I'm happy with how it looks. still a little light so I'm going to use a little bit more of a darker concentration of that green color. I'm tilting my paper so that the color doesn't pull up there around the stem. That'll help it spread out and look more uniform. Now to re-wet and to go over to the corner and down for the next section. Continuing on with the background. Where I left off is still nice and wet so I'm going to make sure that does not dry to a hard edge. So I already pre-wet this top right corner. And I'm just going to continue on with the green and blue mixes. Adding a little bit over here where I already painted just to make sure it's nice and seamless. Getting right up to that edge of the flower. Do that part slow and carefully and then you can more quickly fill in the gaps. It's looking a little light on that original side, so while it's still wet, I'm just dropping in a little bit more of a punch of color. I just want to make sure to work quickly because the other side is still nice and wet now, but I don't want it to dry and then leave a hard edge where I left off. I can see my paper starting to get a little bit dry there, so I'm just going to re-wet it with my large oval brush. 
that should do it. I'm going over some of these other little areas that are not quite heavily pigmented enough. The paper is still nice and wet, so I'm not concerned about any blooms or other imperfections in the background. Some of these really small areas, like in between these petals, I did not pre-wet them initially. I just painted on the dry paper because the area was so small. And I'll reiterate again, <laughs> since the paper is nice and wet, I can keep fine-tuning the color and the intensity and just making sure that everything is cohesive. Now I'm wetting that bottom corner. I'm going to continue on down. Now the largest continuous area of the background is done, and in the next lesson we will work on the inside areas between the flowers. So now I'm going to wet the area in between those flowers. You want to be careful not to make it too wet and puddly, or it will dilute the intensity of the watercolors. And if it's too dilute, then it won't match the rest of the background color. We want it to look like it's all one continuous space in and around the flowers.
for these smaller spaces, I'm switching to my smaller round brush and I did not pre-wet these areas. Just make sure that when you add the paint and it's not pre-wet that the color is not too intense compared to the surrounding background colors. The background is finished now. We will let it dry completely and then work on those beautiful magnolia petals. The background is dry and now we can paint those pretty pink petals. So if you remember on my scrap paper I had painted a little bit of that purpley pink color. So I'm going to match that as close as I can. So with the, uh, with the quinacridone rose and a little bit of the phthalo blue, I'm going to make a nice bright purpley pink color. And I want to make sure that I mix enough to paint the entire base layer of all of the petals. A little bit more pink up here. Just to fine tune that color a bit. And now I'm testing out the shadow color there. So I'm going to start with one petal and I'm going to pre-wet the entire petal. And we'll just do one at a time. And I don't want it to be sopping wet. Just enough to have a sheen on it. I'm trying to get it as evenly wet throughout the entire petal before I start adding paint. Now I can start adding that pink to the petal. I'm going to start with that subtle stripe going up the middle. And I'm using vertical strokes to go in the direction of those little stripes that you see along the petal there. Now I dried my brush and I'm just making little strokes going from the bottom to the top. Now I'm using that slightly darker purpley mix painting right on the bottom where the shadow of the petal is. The petal's still nice and wet, so we'll get some really nice soft edges and blends. Again, wiping off my brush using the, the dry belly just to spread up those stripy areas a little bit. 
and now I'm wetting this petal over here. It's close to that first petal, but it's not quite touching. So I want to make sure that we don't let paint flow from one wet petal to the other and ruin our, our nice wash. So again, using the lighter pink on the wet petal, using the tip of my brush just to gently guide it upwards. And then the deeper, slightly purple mix on the bottom. Just really take your time. And manage the water level on the petal. If it's too wet and puddly, then the paint will go everywhere and you'll have no control over it. And if it's too dry, then you could end up with streaks and hard edges. So you really just want to keep a nice sheen on the paper. I'm moving off to this one. Same as the first, it's darker on the bottom and light towards the tips. So I'm just going to gently guide that pigment from the bottom up to the top and have it slowly fade towards the white. Again, I wipe off my brush and use it clean and dry to help guide that paint upwards. And then the darker mix on the bottom. I'm just very lightly touching that paper with my brush. And in the next lesson, we will just continue on with the first layer of these magnolia petals. The most important thing to keep in mind is to not paint any two petals adjacent to each other until one has dried. That's why I'm jumping around uh, the different flowers here. So starting on this one, the same as before, get it thoroughly and uniformly wet. Don't want it to be too puddly and I don't want it to be too dry. So just get that nice sheen on the paper. Adding that pink color, using mostly vertical strokes. Again, just using the tip of my brush to gently guide the pigment around. The paper's not too wet, so I still have a good amount of control of where the color is going to go. But I can also tell that it's going to stay nice and soft as it very subtly disperses among that wet area of the petal. And now that deeper purpley color for the shadow right here at the base. Sometimes when you have paint that is a little bit more concentrated, it's actually physically heavier and it needs a little bit more prodding to move it where you want it to go. Moving on to this very thin petal back here. You just see the side edge. It's the same thing, beginning with the light pink and then adding a little bit of the shadowy dark purpley pink on the bottom. It's better to be subtle in this early stage because you could always go back and glaze multiple layers to get it more dark and intense if you need to. But if it starts off too dark, then you can't lighten it so easily when you need to. So I'm just going to work around these petals. Keep repeating the process and making sure I'm not touching any other wet areas because I don't want to disturb the wet paint on those other petals. 
we're going to finish up the base layer on these petals. And if nothing else, at least you're getting a lot of practice with <laughs> getting these uh, nice transitions on these petals from the dark to the light. So I'm not doing anything different here, just pre-wetting the larger petals. The smaller ones I tend to do just wet on dry if they're just a really small space, but everything else is just wet on wet. Here I'm using my angle brush just to soften the edge of the um, where the background meets the petal. It was a little bit of a jagged edge, so I was just smoothing it out there with my angle brush. On this one I'm painting a slightly more concentrated pink shade uh, towards the top of the petal because there is a bit of a cast shadow from the forward petal onto that back petal and this just helps it look like there's more separation. And that deeper purple color on the bottom of the petal. Going back to that petal, I'm just adding a little bit more pigment to deepen that color there. It's still nice and wet, so I'm not worried about any blooms or blemishes on that small little wash area. <laughs> 
the small petal here is the side view of one of the petals, so that's why there is a hard edge in the middle. On this petal here, I added almost a little bit too much water. If that ever happens, you can always take a dried off brush and soak up some of that extra water or pigment and then start over.
The base layer of these petals are nice and dry, and now I'm going to mix a little bit more of an intense purple and pink. And this part, we will not just intensify the color, but also focus a little bit more on the texture of those stripes. So here I'm just testing out the colors. I don't want them to be different from the ones we already used too much, but mostly just more intense. What I did there was I loaded up my round brush and then realized that I didn't pre-wet the petal. So I just set it down, picked up my oval brush, and I'm carefully going to re-wet that first petal. I want to be careful not to lift any of that original pigment. And since I didn't wet to the edge of that first one, I'm going to wet the one next to it as well. So there's no water touching from one petal to the other. Using my paper towel just to let some of that pigment uh, out of the brush, because I think I had a little bit too much. I didn't want it to be too intense on the paper. Remember, it's easier to build up depth and color than it is to take it away once it's dried. So once I got the color down there, now I'm using my detail brush just to lift up some strokes of that color. That detail brush had no pigment on it, just a little bit damp. And I'm just dragging that color upwards. Now I'm using my larger round brush again realizing I can add just a little bit more color and pigment. And then use that detail brush again to soften that edge. Now back to that first petal. I did wet this one first, but it was a little too wet, so I waited for it to dry and soak into the paper a little bit before adding the color. This is another, um, another time that you have to be really aware of the amount of pa uh, water that you're using on the paper. If it's too wet, the color will flood and spread everywhere, and if it's too dry, then again, you're not gonna get those nice soft edges. So I had to wait for the paper to be just the right amount of wetness and did the same thing, added the pigment towards the bottom then using my clean detail brush just to subtly lift up and out for the stripey texture of the petals. This color here is a little bit too intense, so I'm going to use my oval brush just to take away a little bit of that pigment. So I swipe it and then I wipe on the paper towel. And that brings that color back to something a little bit more subtle. <laughs> 
I am deepening the base color on that first petal that I painted, just making it a little bit darker there in the corner and dragging it down to the very base of the petal where it meets that green um, flower stem. I'm re-wetting this petal just in stripe, uh, a stripey motion. And deepen it along the back edge. And softening with my detail brush. And deepening the intensity just a little bit of that stripe. The paper's a little bit more dry, so the pigment is not spreading too much, just the right amount for a subtly soft stripe. I'm wetting a few petals at a time so that they have time to soak in to the paper so that they're just the right amount of wetness before I start adding the paint. Again, it just takes some practice getting the timing right. <laughs> 
I'm going to mix a nice natural green for the leaves on the stems and at the base of the petals. So I'm going to start with my phthalo blue and the Hansa yellow. Mixing those together because they're cool colors will be a really nice pretty spring green. And then just to make it more of a earthy mossy green, add a tiny bit of quinacridone rose to neutralize it. So right here I'm just mixing up that green. I'm going to test it out to see how that looks. And as I suspected, it's going to need to be neutralized a bit. But first I'll add some more yellow, get it a little bit lighter. Now the tiniest bit of quinacridone rose will give it a really nice earthy green color. And remember, you want to mix enough to use for all of the areas that you'll need it for on the painting. Add a little bit more yellow here. I still want it to be a slightly yellowy green, just not too bright and intense. So just keep working with these three colors until you get the color that you like. So I'm actually working on two different shades of green here. I'm going to have one for the lighter tone, and then that other one that you see in that top corner of that mixing well, I made it a little bit darker, a little bit more brown for some of the shadow areas. So starting on this little stem, I'm just painting it on dry paper, no need to pre-wet because it's such a small area. I start with the lighter color, now I'm dropping in a little of that darker green color along the bottom and the left edge. Moving on to this one, do the same thing. Painting it right on the dry paper. These are two separate leaves here, but I'm painting them together. And dropping in that darker color on the shadow side. Make sure when you rinse your brush you dry it off so that you're not adding more water into that mixture of paint so you can keep the intensity of the pigment consistent. Moving on to this one along the stem here. I'm not quite painting to the edge because it does have a lit from behind effect, so there is a light glow from behind it. So I'm just going to leave a little bit of white space and then I'll soften that later. <laughs> 
And for most of these little stemmy leaf areas, I'm painting it the same way. Going back to these original leaves, I'm going to paint a second layer. They're nice and dry now. So I'm just going to deepen the color of the shadow area by dipping back into that brownish green. And just painting it along the, mostly along the base and the left side where the shadow area is. Now painting these other little green sections that the base of the flower is growing from. And I'm subtly lifting out a little bit of that pigment for a highlight. I got it a little bit too dark. Just using my clean damp brush to swipe away some of that pigment, then my towel to blot it up again. Now I'm going to deepen that green a bit more with a little bit more phthalo blue to really get into some of those dark shadow areas where those little sections meet and it's a very dark shadow. Making sure it's nice and dry because I want this to be a hard edge. I don't want it to blend and soften. I'm just painting right along the base of those leaves. Just following my reference photo where I see those folds and the hard shadow shapes. 
Then I go in with my detail brush that's a little bit damp and I'm just very subtly softening that edge. It gives me much more control in a small area than a wet and wet wash would do. And just touching it along the very base of these leaves. And that gives them nice separation as well. and just continuing to darken these other leaf areas as well. I'm going to mix a brown for that large leaf that's on the left hand side of that top flower. So using that same green mix that I had before, I'm just going to add a little bit more blue and a little bit more uh, quinacridone rose. And just intensify the colors a bit to get it to be more of a brown. Where before it was a green. warm it up there with a little bit more of that rose color and test it on my paper and I'm happy with that shade so now I can start painting that petal that leaf rather <laughs> actually I would say it's probably more of the pod that the petals come out of than a leaf so now I'm mixing up a darker value using just a little bit more blue and a little bit more rose and a slightly um, slightly less water to intensify that color as well. It's really, really dark now. It's too dark, so I'm going to line it up a bit. That's looking better. I like that color. Now let's get started. So I am pre-wetting the one side of this leaf or pod and then dropping in that lighter brown color. <laughs> 
I'm just being extra careful with my edges there. Now while I wait for that to dry, I'm going to pre-wet the stem. And I'll be using both of those brown colors to add a variety of not just color to the stems, but a variety of texture. So I'm starting with the darker shade, and I'm painting this towards the bottom of the branch. Being careful not to paint onto the background. I added quite a bit of water to that branch ahead of time, which is making the paint a little bit too uh, faint but I wanted to make sure that I had enough time to work it without the paint drying to a hard edge in the middle of the branch. So to compensate, I'm just dipping in a little bit more heavy pigment. And then I can still maintain that soft blurry area. Painting around that petal. Now I'm using that lighter brown. Painting above the darker brown. And then using my damp detail brush just to lightly feather it out and blend it. Here I painted it brown and realized it needed to be a green area, so I just lifted some of that pigment and added some of the green. I'm going back to the stem now, and I'm going to add a little bit of texture by dropping in some more of that dark brown. And since the branch is starting to slightly dry, when I drop in this darker color, it's going to make some of the pigment that's already there start to uh, spread out and create, and basically creating intentional blooms, and that'll make some of that um, branch look textured. Now I'm using my detail brush and I'm just slightly dropping in a little bit of water and that creates the same effect of dispersing that paint and creating a mottled texture on that branch. Really fun and easy. Now for the bottom branch, I pre-wet that whole branch again. I just skipped forward a bit. Again using that dark brown on the bottom. Working fairly quickly so it doesn't dry. But still trying to be very careful not to accidentally paint into the background. <laughs> 
Again, I'm using my detail brush just to drop a little bit of water to create that mottled textural effect. I'm going to soften the highlight on that little leaf bud area here. I'm just using my damp detail brush to soften that edge. I'm also pre-wetting it a bit because I'm going to be darkening it with the shadow color of that dark brown that we mixed in the last lesson. It's a little bit of that brown a touch of that green and just adding it in. You get to a point in the painting where you start thinking more about the relative values and fine-tuning as you go and it kind of comes down to personal style. I like to have a lot of contrast when I paint. It just I feel that it looks better more interesting when there's a lot of value contrast. and deepening these uh, shadow areas on these sections. Now the branch is completely dry so I'm using my wet brush to gently uh, re-wet it again to go in for a deeper layer. I don't want to disturb the first layer of color so I'm painting it very lightly. And to this dark brown I'm going to add a little bit more blue. This will give me a really nice dark shadow color. And I'm just going to drop it all along the bottom edge of this branch. And around the leaf bud area for a shadow. And this bluey brown color really contrasts nicely with that purplish brown color from the first layer. And it's nice and transparent, so you can still see the texture from before. back to that lighter brown and I'm just dropping that in on the top area there. And again just dropping in a little bit of water to disperse that pigment and create the texture. Do the same thing again on the bottom branch. Pre-wet it, drop in that darker color, and just let it blend smoothly into the center of the stem. Painting carefully around this leaf area. Then back to the lighter brown for those top areas.
just keep adding that dark bluish brown until I'm happy with the intensity and the contrast. Then again I use my damp brush and I drop in little bits of water to disperse that pigment. Now I'm going to go back to the seed pod area and I'm going to paint that dark side that's closer to the petal. Start by pre-wetting just that half. I'm going to want a hard edge here on one side so I don't wet the whole thing, just that half. Then I add that dark brown mix and glaze right over the top. warm that up a little bit with some more of the rosy or brown. Make it nice and dark but still keep it transparent. And now I'm going to paint this one on the side here just wet on dry. Leaving a little white highlight on the edge. Softening that edge a bit. Now adding a shadow color on the bottom of that seed pod that I did not pre-wet before. And just use my damp, clean detail brush to gently spread out that color for a soft transition. Gonna add a little bit of that brown shadow color to the base of this leaf area. And again, deepening the shadows on these little leaf areas as well. <laughs> 
I'm pretty much just intensifying the shadows on these green areas until they're dark enough compared to my reference photo. I'm going to be doing mostly some final touches just to bring it all together. So I'm going to make a dark purple just to intensify some of the shadows on those petals. Just mixing my phthalo blue and my quinacridone rose to get a really nice rich purple color. And then using my detail brush I'm just painting wet on dry, just subtly adding some of these this uh, darker shadow color in some of these very uh, bottom darker areas. So adding it with my detail brush then using my clean slightly damp round size 8 to blend out the color. Just really subtle and soft. And that's already making a big difference in some of that contrast between the petals. Shadow area behind that seed pod. Again, I'm applying it with my detail brush on dry paper. And then where it needs to blend, I just use my clean damp brush to softly blend it out.
Now I'm mixing up another dark brown to intensify the dark of that seed pod. Painting it dry on dry paper, rather. And once again, I'm going to glaze over those stems. So I'm using more of this cool purple color for the darker tone. And I'm just painting it on a dry stem this time. Just a really light layer glazing over that other color. Nice and thin so you can still see the texture underneath. I'm going to add a little bit more of a green color to that little leaf pod area right on the branch. That highlight is just a little too white, so I'm going to change it to more of a light green color right around these edges here. This isn't ideal, but I did miss a spot when we were first painting the background. So I'm going to try to carefully match that same background color and paint it just on dry paper right into this tiny little area here. And that's it. I'm going to sign it and then one of my favorite parts is to peel away the washi tape to see that clean white border. I really hope you enjoyed watching this class and I hope you give it a try and I would love to see what you created. Thank you so much for joining me for this Magnolia's lesson. If you have any questions or comments or feedback, you can reach out to me through my website or through the class messenger.